I came home from my work trip two days early to surprise my wife, but instead found out her cheating. So I recorded everything and ghosted her with no closure. My worst nightmare came true. So I, 28 male, went on a work trip for a week and told my partner of three years, ex, 31 female, I was coming home on Sunday, but I had actually booked to fly in yesterday and take her on a surprise date on her birthday, Friday, which I otherwise would have missed. Messaged ex happy birthday yesterday morning and asked what she was doing for the day, to which she replied she would be having wine and movies with her friend, Y, 30 female, who lives in our apartment block. I reiterated I could not wait to be home on Sunday. She said she couldn't wait and that she loves me. It has been really hard to write and relive this, but when I got home, I parked out the front of the building and out on the street and when I walked through the code gate, I could not see lights on up by our balcony. I did see Y's lights on, so I assumed X would be at her place. I did not even have to enter as her place is on the ground level and I saw through her window. She was on her couch watching TV alone. I figured maybe X was out, so I walked up our three flights of stairs and as I approached the door, I could hear it and my heart just sunk. The sound of R&B music, moaning and knocking. The door was not even unlocked and where it is positioned is when opened is in direct view of our bedroom. I just slightly opened the door and saw my girlfriend straddled on top of who I instantly recognized to be a guy from the gym we go to. I think what stood out to me more was it looked like it was unprotected sex as I could see everything. I quietly closed the door and my soul just felt like it floated out of me. I knew they never heard me or noticed the door. I sat on the step for a good five minutes to process. This has always been my worst nightmare, but to literally have it play out exactly how I dreaded. Another man in our bed, just gripped at the heart. I could not cry as it felt so surreal. Was this really happening? Am I dreaming? The continued sounds quickly brought me back to earth. I got up and walked out of the building and towards the front gate. Y had spotted me through the window and called out to me and waved, gesturing me to come over. I do get along very well with her, and in the past she has told X how highly she thinks of me as a friend too. She has openly told X she finds me attractive, and if I had single friends who were also my nationality, New Zealand. We kind of had a chemistry between us from the first time I met Y, but that always stayed buried in my mind. I put on a brave face and walked into her apartment. We hugged and she asked what I was doing home early. I told her I had dates mixed up, and that wasn't she not meant to be having birthday drinks with X? She seemed confused and told me that she said X was going out for drinks with some of our gym friends. Go figure. I instantly burst out in tears and cried for what felt like forever, and she got quite worried asking what was wrong. Did something happen to me, etc.? I struggled for words, but it blurted out that I had just walked in on the two of them in our bed. Her face turned so white, and she just hugged me and started to cry too. She knows I'm a joker, but I think she knew this was no joke. I just started talking out of frustration. I did not know what to do. They could be up there all night, and that this was my nightmare. We had no issues in our relationship other than her lack of interest in sex, once every six weeks. It's a wonder I lasted three years with her, and I accepted that a long time ago. Why laughed through her tears and told me she has always been single, and not had sex the entire time she knew me, and joked that maybe we could both use it. This actually made me laugh a bit too and I hugged her, thanked her and for a second forgot X was upstairs cheating on me. I asked her if I could stay there for the night as I had nowhere to go and I slept on the couch. I am still here a day later. I watched the guy leave in the morning and watched in tears when he came back this evening. I am meant to be home tomorrow afternoon. Have not texted X all day but she has not texted me either. Truth be told, the only comfort I have now is with Y. How do I deal with X? Do I walk up there and interrupt? Do I call? Top comments. Someone says. I am a petty person. I take a pic of him entering the apartment, wait till they leave, then grab my stuff. When she notices it missing, send her the pic and tell her you've been back since Friday but hated to interrupt her birthday ride. You'll be back at some date to get the furniture. Don't let her have it all. Next piece of advice from 33, say what 33? Not married? It's over. Want a family one day? It won't be with her, so move on. Thank her parents for always being nice to you. But cheating is not something you tolerate. Go get your stuff with a friend. Stay calm. Never lose your cool. Make sure you tell her in person. Her response is key. If marriage was ever discussed, remind her that that's gone. Don't tell her what you know. 
Just pack your stuff because she's not faithful. If she begs for you to stay, tell her to write down the timeline of the cheating. Who, what, when, where, how. She'll only want to confess what you know. Then she'll get angry at you. Just chuckle and say, Yep, they always blame others when they're cornered. Go get boxes. It's over. Stay cool no matter how much she yells or cries. One more from the community, from Ill-Tempered 1978. Find another place to stay and leave her. Don't even give her closure. That's my opinion. It doesn't matter how many times she cheated. All that matters is that she did. You have your answers, so F her. Either you move out or she moves out. That woman is for the streets. Opie replies, I think her getting no closure is the best thing I can think of. At this stage, I want to move out. All right, let's go to the update. Firstly, I thank everyone for their views, opinions, and advice. I'm still trying to keep up with reading the comments. I appreciate those saying I should have had a backbone or spine as to be honest. I would be saying the same things to someone else. This is my first experience with infidelity, so it is easier to judge until I actually had it happen. Anywho, before I tell what has happened today, I will answer a few questions. Me. I have my own business and run it end to end by myself. I travel maybe three times a year to meet with production facilities and doing quality checks for my product. Physically, I am 6 feet 6 inches, 124 kilograms, and I play rugby and have done a lot of boxing so I can definitely defend myself. However, I do not go around using that. I absolutely tower over that piece of crap guy in every way. I earn a very comfortable living, as does X, so a split will not financially cripple either of us and we are not married. The tears have been shed and I realize this is a blessing in disguise and I know what I need to do. Apartment. We split all the bills 50 to 50 and have four months and a week left from a year-long lease which both of our names are on. We had actively been looking for a home to buy however I guess I dodged a bullet there. Why? What a woman. Aside from her personality, she is also absolutely gorgeous. How she is and always has been single I will never know, and she has not been intimate with anyone in over three years, according to X. She has been on my side through it all, without saying a cruel word about X. She understands it was a bad thing to do towards me, and that it does not involve her. That being said, she has said once X inevitably has owned up to it, she will likely stop being friends with her due to the act. She has not tried to come on to me like a rebound, and has just been super supportive. That alone speaks volumes of her character. X. Works in a hospital and is very attractive. Nice woman, but can be quite self-centered. In hindsight, we were basically just friends. When you have only ever had protected sex because she does not want to get pregnant or go on the pill and it is once in a blue moon, I guess I just accepted it and got too comfortable in the relationship being what it was. I just try to get my head around her never even showing signs she was cheating. I know I am not perfect, but I have always been good to her, always cooked for her and did a lot around the house. Went on dates regularly, told her things about her to make her feel loved and always got brushed off after what I thought was a good night. I now question why if she did not want me, why does she stay for this long? My plan. I intended to call her this morning to say my flight would be leaving earlier and could she pick me up at the airport earlier. With the airport being a 40-minute drive away, I could use this time to go up and pack all of my things and rush them to my car and why I said I could put some in her spare room. Once X would notice my things missing, she would try to call me, message me etc. and I would simply respond with a photo of the two of them in bed. After reading comments, I decided the most cruel punishment for her would be to have no closure. I would explain to the property manager my circumstances and go and stay out of friends until I find a new place. X can cover the rent, she can certainly afford it. I do have the option to stay with Y, but that is way too close to X, and I do not want to do anything with Y that could ruin our friendship even though I know her and I are inevitable. The outcome. I went up very early in the morning and very quietly opened the door. Fortunately, they were asleep on the bed so I took a photo of them but it was weird that I almost felt guilty about violating privacy when my entire relationship was violated. I did not feel sad anymore, just angry and betrayed. I noticed what would have been his shoes on the floor next to my various much larger pairs. I decided to take a photo of those and use it first. I figured it would be a more subtle way that she would likely lie about until I hit her with the photo of them in bed. 
I went back down to Y's and waited around for another hour or so until I was certain X would be awake. I tried to call and no answer and twice again to no answer. I looked at Y and we both just knew what was happening. After about a half hour, she called me and sounded very much awake and like everything was very much normal. I tried to put on my normal voice and told her my flight is leaving two hours earlier than I thought and could she collect me at 1 p.m. She said yes and that she loved me, that she was at her parents for breakfast and that they said hello. Lie. On that note, her parents love me and will be broken about this. I went and laid down for a few hours to run in my head what I would get from the apartment. Other than clothes and a few appliances, most of my stuff was already boxed as I knew if we bought a house I wanted an easy move. Around midday, I saw X go down to the car park and gave it a few minutes after she left before I moved my car downstairs and went upstairs. It smelled like air freshener and I noticed how new sheets and covers on this bed. All dishes were done. She went at every length to cover up that anyone else was ever there. It took me all but 10 minutes to gather all of my things and if I forgot anything, I probably did not care about it. It did feel weird knowing it would be a goodbye to the place I called home, but I felt strong. X sent me a message asking where I was as she was at the arrivals area. I replied and said I was held up and that I would Uber home. Maybe an hour later, a bunch of missed calls and her messaging saying where is all my stuff and has something happened. My heart nearly beat out of my chest when I sent the photo of the shoes saying these aren't my size. She had the audacity to reply saying they were her brothers from when he picked her up to go to mom and dad's. Did I not say she would pull something like that? I did not even want to discuss, but I knew she was cornered so I sent the photo of them in bed and I have left it at that. She did not even try to call as I was expecting a wave of calls or texts. In my eyes, that is me leaving her and I know I could have called her out or caught them in the act confronted them, but I wanted her to know I knew and that she would never be able to know how or explain herself. I will not tarnish her name as it is not in my nature, and I do not want to ruin her life, but she can live with this forever although I doubt she has a conscience. I have left wise as I know X will be down to see her soon and I am at my friends nearby collecting today's rundown to relay to you all. If it were not for Y, this would have been a lot harder, but I know she will sever her friendship with X in the next day or two. I am doing well and looking ahead. This hurt at first, but I am glad I found out now and not after we bought a home. I have sent an email to the property manager informing her of our sudden split and that she would be covering the rent until the lease ends and she can keep the bond. I think the pain for X will be when Y and I begin our inevitable relationship. P.S. I am really resisting the urge to go to the gym and throw hands. Top comments. Scary Inspector 8315 says, Dude, Please don't cover anything for her. Blow her world up before she plays the victim card and turns this against you. Especially since it seems you and why we'll be getting together. She will claim you cheated on her first. This good boy high ground route always gets men screwed. Drop this good boy attitude and nuke her all the way. Showing kindness to your enemy is being cruel to yourself. Worried ad 7731 says. Good for you. Take your time with why. See a therapist and put extra focus on yourself. All right, let's go to the second cheating story. My wife wanted to open our marriage and this is how it destroyed her life. I was married for two years at the time. Life is a serious TikTok junkie. Sends me at least 20 a day. We are both in our early 20s. Start sending ones about open marriages and also some podcasts. A few long talks about how we are young and should try this before we are old and have kids. After a few months of pushing and pushing, I give in and we set up some boundaries. No unprotected sex. 2. Nothing in our house and no overnight stays. 3. If sex occurs with someone else, no details, no touching each other for 30 days, and a doctor's visit and cleared before any intimacy between us. We open our marriage. She starts going on dates on Friday nights. I work anyways. I get home normally around 10 p.m. For the first year, it was kind of fun. She goes out on a date. By the time I get home, she's already home or getting home at the same time. She tells me what they did on the date and she jumps me. They are just dates, no sex or intimacy. During this first year, I myself go on three dates. Each one goes the exact same way. They find out I am married and it is not what they are looking for. It was nice meeting you. After three dates, I quit. Then one Friday night, she doesn't get home until like 3 a.m. Comes in, 
makes a joke about being too sore and tired for anything. See some hickey marks on her chest and thighs. Not going to lie, was hurt and upset by this. Monday or Tuesday, I don't remember. She tries to initiate with me, and I remind her of rule number three. She gives me the, are you serious? 30 days and a doctor's visit? I said yes, deadly serious. This becomes a pattern for us. She goes out with her bad boy on Friday nights, has her fun, then spends the rest of the week trying to get me to change rule number three. To me, feels like she put me on a shelf. I start avoiding her, working more out of the house, even if just out walking. Start becoming a lot more physically active. Start losing some weight. She is full in a fog of new relationship energy and doesn't notice and thinks I am out doing my own thing. I have months of being on a shelf. I'm not seeing a reason to remain in this marriage. I was selling my happiness so she could be happy and I was running out of things to sell. Up to this point, she has not broken any boundaries and every time I bring up maybe she should step back from him. I am overreacting and blowing this way out of proportion. It's just some fun one night a week. Our fourth wedding anniversary day arrives and I take the day off of work, make her dinner and clean the house. She gets home from work at four, hops in the shower, gets dressed up, tells me she is going to a bar to see a local band and not to wait up. She completely forgot about our anniversary. I am destroyed. I wake up Saturday morning at 9 a.m. and she never came home. Boundary number two broken. I send her one simple text. You have broken our boundary of no slipping over. I am done. At 11.30, she starts calling, telling me she just closed her eyes for a second and passed out. It was an accident. I am so sorry. I am done again. My unwillingness to even talk about it causes her to wake up out of her fog some. She ends up coming to my work just before we open. It makes a scene in front of the whole staff and the owners. I am finally able to calm her down enough, and she leaves I promised on Sunday we can discuss it. I get home from work Saturday night, and she once again tries to have sex with me, and again tell her rule number three. She then tells me that she will no longer be seeing him, and wants to close the marriage, and work on reconnecting with me. She freaked out when she woke up there, got my texts and he made fun of her and she realized how much of an a-hole he was. She tries every day to be intimate with me and fails badly. At this point I have no need or want or desire for her. She is a roommate. Barely the 30 days goes by, she goes to the doctor and gets checked out. She is clean of diseases but is pregnant. Not sure where her mind was, but this, but she comes home excited and tells me we are pregnant. I tell her good. I hope you two will be happy together. She helps me confuse for a few minutes and starts crying. She a few days later sends him a text telling him. His response is, wow, sucks to be you. Might want to pass it off as your husband's. Later, I file for divorce soon after. She starts doing anything and everything to change my mind about the divorce. Make promises, bags, pleads. Offers everything under the sun asking for a chance to fix us. I am polite and nice about it but not having any of it. I am stuck living with her for a while until our lease is up. We fall into a new pattern. She tries to be intimate with me. I turn her down. She gets upset. I go for a run. My resentment of her is growing just like her baby bump. Three weeks ago, she comes in my room to talk. She brought home pizza for dinner. Starts with how being pregnant she is, super horny all the time, and tries yet again to have sex with me. I at this point am running out of politeness. Tell her sorry, I am not into fat chicks. We hit Tinder, sure, someone on there would be down for it. She leaves the room crying. Also, we had our first divorce hearing after the judge slapped six weeks of marriage counseling on a court order. We go two sessions. Kinda a meet and greet thing. Talk to us separately to get our stories, I guess. I just want this over so we can move on with our lives. Last Sunday was my birthday. On that Friday before it, she asked me to spend my birthday with her to celebrate it. I decline her invitation. She keeps pushing the subject and I snap. I tell her I don't waste special occasions on her anymore. The last one was our fourth anniversary in which she went out to get knocked up by some pothead loser. I leave her crying in the kitchen, head to work, told her I would see her on Monday for our court order waste of time. Monday morning I am at marriage counseling and she never shows. I call her. Nothing. Call her friends. Nothing. Call her parents. She got arrested Sunday morning for DUI and reckless endangerment, and they are on the way. I offer our house for them to stay at. 
I have a couch at a friend's house. My lawyer goes to the judge and expedites things. My divorce finalized this past Friday. Yesterday, I helped them pack some of her stuff and today going to help them load a U-Haul they rented. She gets released tomorrow and they are taking her back home with them. She wants to see me but I feel that will just be worse for the both of us. We both need to move on. Top Comments GH6ST says That 30-day rule likely saved you from being stuck to her for another 18 years. I guarantee you she would have tried to pass the baby off as yours if the two of you were having sex at the time. Good luck on your future. Joma's Witness says I'm really glad you stood up for yourself, my guy. Keep it going. You'll find someone who only wants you. Levanna's adds in next. The funny thing is you stood by the rules and gave her every chance to improve. And she broke every single one of them. Number three, she tried consistently to break, showing a complete disrespect. Imagine that. She had the entire thing handed to her exactly as she wanted it, and it wasn't enough. And then she thought, you would still stay after she broke every rule but you didn't. And you're a dang hero for that. I really saw this story going another way, but this was the best outcome. You got rid of a miserable person who tried to take advantage of you every single step of the way. Corky Macaroon 7999 says, Do not sign the birth certificate and ask your lawyer as to how to get out of not paying child support. You would need to show DNA tests to show that you are not the father. And do not proclaim the kid as your own otherwise courts might compel you to pay child support. Please check with your lawyer regarding kids born with another father during the marriage. The OP replies, Lawyer said I am free and clear, just super emotional today. Been crying, not sure for what just.